What's up, buddy, my dude? <laughs> hey, hey, how's it going? How are you? So you've been on my, uh, you've been on uh, the Ask Yourself Discord Archive YouTube channel quite a bit. See that Mike the Vegan conversation got you a little bit riled up. Yeah, I, I guess so. It was, uh, I'm glad you guys had that talk. Yeah, I am too, actually. So, um... Mike was you know, uh, distracted by his video games, though, obviously. <laughs> yeah, so that's a shame. Um, do you have a case, I'm just curious, do you have a case that humans could naturally get uh, sufficient quantities of B12 in a, in a natural environment on a vegan diet? <laughs> yeah, I, I do think one could make that case. All right, go ahead. Where is it come well, from? Where where does where where would we get um, sufficient quantities of B twelve in a natural environment on a vegan diet? Right. So uh, B twelve is produced by bacteria mm -hmm. uh, that that live in soil and mm -hmm. in humans' gut mm -hmm. when we eat the bacteria and. Uh, and uh, it ends up in water. It ends up on the surface of vegetables. And Are you familiar so we, with the concentrations of, of B12, the type of B12 that's active B12 that we can actually utilize that is in these sources, both in terms of produced in our gut and produced? <laughs> and by gut, I'm also referring to anything proximal to the terminal ileum because we can't absorb anything proximal, to, uh, distal to the terminal ileum as far as B12 is concerned. And then in the soils and then in these water bodies. So are you familiar with how much B12 is there actually in these sources? And how much of it is actually usable? Which means that it has the ligand of 5,6-dimethyl benzimidazole. No, no I, I don't. I'm not too familiar with that. I understand your argument, though. Um, and I do. I'm familiar with pseudo B12. And okay. I uh, to take your word for it that the, on, on the math that you've calculated. I also uh, randomly ended up uh, listening to one of Ask Yourself's discussion with uh, Banana Warrior Princess, Humane Hancock, and uh, someone else, and he was talking about how someone in his Discord had calculated the amount of B12 you would need to get it from other than animal products, and I knew exactly who he was talking about <laughs> back in April. Yeah. Uh, Right, so so I, I'm making the argument that because we know that humans are so excellent at conserving B12 and it takes uh, about half a decade for us to become deficient in B12, that because of that, very little amount is required. Furthermore, it, because of soil erosion and uh, topsoil degradation that we have nowadays, we don't have a clear picture of exactly how much of this bacteria that uh, produces B12 in our guts uh, is pr was present at the time of early human development. And we could, we can't rule out the possibility uh, that there was adequate amount of B12 sufficient enough for, uh, to propagate human survival and even hu early human evolution from uh, into early hominoid species. Has there ever been a case where you can list that a human does have sufficient bacteria to produce the right quality of B12 proximal to their distal, um, proximal to their uh, terminal ileum that would allow them to go seven plus years without becoming B12 deficient? Is, is there one example that you can point to this? Um, well, I did find that one study, that uh, one about, study what, wasn't an example that, was, of, uh, that one study wasn't, a, by the way, just to be clear, that one study you posted, did you read that entire study or did you just read the abstract? No, I just read the abstract cause it wasn't going to okay. buy it, but, but, yeah. but I don't, so, I don't so, understand. So I've, the, I've, the distal... I've read, I've read that entire study. I don't have it on me right now because I'm on my phone, but I've read my, that entire study because my university, ha the, the university I'm affiliated with does have it. Um, and what they, that study assumed is it assumed B12 levels far lower um, because it was from the 
uh, 80s, I believe. And back then, they thought that the amount of B12 required was far lower than what we actually know that it is now because they thought the only problem, um, they thought the only problem was going to be anemia related and not the larger issue, which are the neurological problems. And even if the anemia is staved off, the neurological problems still happen, um, which is the impaired ability to walk, the degradation of the dorsal columns of the spinal cord. Um, so basically, they were assuming that you only would need 0.1 micrograms a day of B12, which is just absurd. Um, and even the amounts that they were able to find produced by the bacteria, you know, it wasn't nearly enough to even get in the ballpark of the range of that, that you would need. Um, and also, um, notably, most of the bacteria that they found were actually synthesizing pseudo B12. A small portion of the B12 being synthesized was actually usable B12. Uh huh. Yeah, it's uh, just my assumption that uh, vi that uh, so, so humans I'll were original, deficient I'll in B twelve when when they were evolving. Yes, they were deficient in B twelve, no doubt. Well, clearly they weren't deficient to the point where they would get neurological deficits, which happens at a higher rate, which happens at higher levels of B twelve. So clearly they weren't being deficient to the point where they would get neurological deficits because if they were they wouldn't be able to survive now the question is can you point to a case where someone can solely rely on their, their micro their gut microbiota to synthesize sufficient amounts of b12 and go seven plus years or 10 plus years without being deficient to the point where they would get anemia or they would get neurological dysfunction. Can you point to a single case report of this happening? Uh, not at this time, no. I okay, cannot. well, if you can't point out of the 7 billion humans that exist, if you can't point to a single case report of this happening, why would we speculate? What reason would we speculate that somehow this would magically happen in the past? Uh, I, I, I haven't looked into it, but I, I don't doubt that there... Uh, there is the ability for humans to go five years at no, least. Five, no, that's, no dishon that's the very dishonest. Five years is is common for whether it's B five years is expected. It takes two to four years on average for a B12 deficiency to happen because B the body is has a high B12 stores when you're getting B12. Um, but the problem with that is that that's just the standard expectation. So, of course, you pointing out it takes five years is meaningless. That's the standard expectation of how long it'll take for a B12 deficiency to happen. Who cares? Uh, well, there are uh, numerous examples in history where humans have survived with deficiencies. You know, populations have def survived with deficiencies. For example, the term rednecks in America comes from... Uh, of mineral or vitamin deficiency. I can't remember off do, the top of my head. Know, do you know what happens when you're deficient in B12 for a prolonged period of time above five years, 10 years, 15 years? Do you know, do you, are you familiar with what actually happens? It's not, it's not like any other mineral deficiency. Yeah. Well, now, can you tell me, can you tell me what happens? No, I understand that it's not not specifically. No, I know that it creates neurological problems. I I don't know to the specifically. Point, to the point that to the point there's an inability to walk. There's an inability right, to right. to move your body. Yeah. So and then so, and then, uh, and, then and then and then death. Okay, fair enough. And I believe that that's uh, with like getting no B twelve, not. This, uh, no, this necessarily is with, a, a this deficiency. Is, this, this this will happen. This will happen for ev for everyone we that we can observe that does not get an intake of B twelve that will rely on their gut microbiota to synthesize B twelve for them. Like this is dangerous. This will kill people. And it's so. And we have not been able to see a counterexample of this not killing someone when it's. How could we observe that though? Considering the soil erosion and the poor soil quality we have today compared to what early humans 
because there's soil all across the globe and we you can have all sorts of third world countries you can have all sorts of areas outside outside of first world countries or you can there would be one at least one count you would expect at least one counter example and it just hasn't been shown where is the counter example where the where the um, just look there's seven billion humans and there's an entire planet full of where is the counter example here Hello? Yeah, uh, I, I guess I can't really say I have one, but I didn't specifically uh, spend the time yet to uh, try to uh, answer that question. But uh, that being said, uh, I still think that, it, I mean, it's not just the B12 that synthesizes in your gut microbiome, eating the bacteria that's present in the soil, but also the bacteria are creating the B12 on the soil in okay, the, so. and so there's, and there's also this, the, the amount of B12 in the water, in the algae that people are eating when they're drinking the water. So there's a, other sources. Is, are you familiar with how much that you end up getting from those sources? I, I understand your argument is that it's very, very small even amount. If, even if we assumed perfect absorption, even if we assume that the, from the sources where there's the majority of pseudo B12, even if we assume that wouldn't impede or impair with the actual usable, you would need to drink enormous amounts of this water. With the one, with the one exception I've seen in the literature, which is during a specific, which is in an area where humans did not evolve. For the majority of their evolutionary history, and it only happens and during an annual bloom. It was for, it was found in a in a water area in New York. Every other area that's found, especially the areas where humans actually did evolve, there was no evidence you would ever be able to. You would probably sooner die from water toxicity than you would actually get the required amount of B twelve from drinking these water sources. And there's no so, evidence. So do you believe it. the required amount of B12, the RDA, is the amount that you need in order to not suffer neurological damage? Uh, I see no reason to believe that. Wait, the RDA? No, the RDA is probably the RDA for neurological damage. I think the RDA is sufficient to prevent neurological damage. Um but what I'm saying is that you won't be able to get anywhere close to the RDA. It's not just that you won't meet the RDA. That's not my case. You won't even begin to kiss the toes of the RDA with a natural vegan diet. Right. Um, and I guess that brings me to my second question is where else would you consider that early humans got their B12? Uh, they got it from animal products, whether that be from insects, whether it be from animals, whether it be from uh, fish, whether it be from, yeah, I think they got it from animals. Insects are animals, by the way. Fair enough. But uh, I, I just would be concerned with assuming that uh, humans were successful enough at hunting and fishing, especially early humans, um, and especially early hominoids, uh, to to uh, acquire enough B12 through or those methods. Eating, or eating insects. I mean, there's. I don't think there's a point in human history, in evolutionary human history, where humans weren't eating insects. Uh, what about humans that migrated to colder climates? Oh, well, they would be getting their B12 from, um, first of all, that's late. That's very late in evolutionary history. That's not early in evolutionary history. The majority of our evolutionary history, we weren't in those, those climates. But secondly, they would be getting their B12. Those people who migrated to those areas, they actually have a more carnivorous diet they tend to have.
I do remember one of Mike the Vegan's videos talking about uh, an early human that they found that had was very well preserved from being nearly frozen, and they were able to analyze his hair samples and find that, and uh, were able to use that evidence to show that he was basically vegan. I don't. I'm. I don't see how that. You know, I have to see the data for that. But I don't. Again, like you can show that he wasn't eating insects, that he wasn't eating any animal products by analyzing a hair. That seems really, really sketchy. Fair enough. Okay, so is there any evidence that humans can get adequate B12 on a natural vegan diet? Yeah, I, I still think there well, is the possibility. There, it leaves no, the possibility well, open well, that there's well, no, you're just saying sufficient possible. enough B12. You're just saying uh, something's possible. When you say something's possible, what do you mean? I think uh, that it, there's a good chance that uh, the uh, early humans, especially uh, in Africa, were not very successful hunters. And uh, again, in Africa, there were plenty of insects. It didn't matter if they weren't successful hunters. There were plenty of insects to get B12 from. And there, so you were able to find the uh, B12 numbers of insects? Uh, I can. I don't have the numbers on me. But yes, yeah, some insects do have B12 in them. I find that fascinating. Why is that fascinating? Uh, I mean, are they fermenting B12 in their hindgut as well? Like, are the ins I don't know how the insects have B12 in them, but they but there are some insects that do, and we can consume them. We, and we have consumed. Um, we don't ferment. We don't ferment. Um, we do ferment in our hindgut. We just can't absorb B twelve from in our hindgut like other monogastric herbivores can. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, so that's the argument for why. I understand your argument. So that's why you're saying that they uh, that we had to have eaten animal products because we ate animals that had adequate enough B12 in their gut. When, in their gut, well, it, it doesn't have to be in their gut when we eat, ate them. It could just be absorbed into their muscle tissue when we, like, we ate it from so the muscle They're tissue. better at gathering B12 than humans. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, far superior. And insects, too? Certain types of insects. It depends on what it would depend on which type of insect. Also, um, bivalves are really uh, certain aquatic animals, uh, fish, bivalves. Those are very, very high in B twelve, especially bivalves. But yeah, I just don't see, I just, when I'm looking at the concentrations of B12, when I'm looking at the numbers in the soil or in the in fecal matter or in, in these water areas, I, I, it just seems ridiculous to say that we would get our B12 from these sources. Well, I would not argue that we got it from fecal matter, uh, you know. So. Well, or any of, any of those sources, so it, whether it be soil or whether it be water or whether it be fecal matter, any of these sources, it seems insane. It seems like verging so what, on insanity. To think what percentage of uh, your RDA of B12 do you get from what you, you the math you calculated, do you get from uh, water or potentially from root vegetables? If you, if you drink more, if you drink more water, if you drink more of it than you should, far more of it than you should, maybe you'll get, maybe you'll get 10%. If you get, I think if it was like five liters or something, or to 10 liters, you may get like 10% of the RDA on uh, some of the numbers I've seen. Uh, that probably was a charitable estimate. It's probably lower than that. The most charitable one is it would be in the, in during the algal, during the bloom, not the algal bloom. There was a bacterial bloom in a New York water area, but that's not, that's not where humans evolved anyway. Um, right, that's right. only for one. That's only for one month out of the year where you would be able to.
to do that. Um, so yeah, may, I don't, I don't. You, you'd have to really push it to even get ten percent of the RDA. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, <clears throat> I I do think that it's a strong argument, but uh, unfortunately, I just if there's any amount of if I mean with that amount of B12 and how we know humans are very good at conserving B12, no, 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 I still not, think it's, it's not, fair no, no, enough. No, 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 no. It's not that humans are very good at conserving B12. They're they're not. It's just that it takes a long time for B12 to deplete. That doesn't mean we're very good at conserving it. Just because it takes a mm. long time to deplete, it doesn't mean we're good at conserving it. Because so it that still study, ends up depleting. Uh, it still ends up depleting about the, at the end of the day. Right. Right, I understand. So that study that I cited to you that you were able to read, um, mm -hmm. that that showed the. So I must have misread that. So that was talking about uh, gut fermentation past the point that was no, able no, to be absorbed. No, no, or... no, no, no. It was pro it was before the point that was able to be absorbed. That's not the problem. The problem was that number one, they assumed getting enough B twelve was far lower than what we now know it is. So to the point where it was, instead of 2.4 micrograms RDA, they had 0 0.1 micrograms. And then that was, and then problem number two was that the majority of B12 being produced by the microbes were, was pseudo B12. It wasn't actual usable B12. And then problem number three was when they, when they extracted the microbes and saw how much they produced, it was it was an abysmal amount. It was, it was just not enough. They thought it would be enough back then because we didn't know about how much B12 we needed back then. I don't think that there is much incentive for humans to acquire B12 from animal products. Uh, I see w your point with bugs, but I just don't think humans have an appetite for bugs. I don't humans see why that eaten, they would. Humans have eaten bugs throughout their virtually, virtually their entire evolutionary history. It's a very, very recent thing that we stopped eating bugs. Recent in terms of our evolutionary history. Well, I I do concede that I it's it's hard to argue that uh, humans didn't uh, take make use of uh, eating bugs when they when they were available, and uh, and uh, it's hard to argue that humans weren't uh, didn't uh, take make use of any animal product that was available to them, which is fair to label them as omnivores uh, as a result. Uh, still, um, I, I still uh, like to talk about uh, the comparative ana anatomy and, That's and how... Tangential. That's what, tangential. Comparative anatomy is tangential to whether, even if, look, even to, first of all, it's tangential to whether we can get adequate B12 on a natural vegan diet. And as long as we possess the trait of not being able to get adequate B12 on a natural vegan diet, then we are de facto not herbivores. Even if we had all the comparative anatomy of an herbivore, even if we looked exactly like a cow, as long as we possess the trait. Well, how, well, how do you define natural? I mean, because I could ferment the bacteria in my own well, home no, and well, put it in a pool of algae well, no, and drink the well, algae. Well, well, no, in other words, as long as we possess the trait of needing to consume animal products in order to get sufficient quantities of B12, then we are de facto not herbivores. And, and again, when by natural, I just mean like we're not in this state of technology that we're in today. We're not synthesizing it. We're not using tools to, fer to ferment. We're doing what we, we could have done, anything that we could have done and did do back in the historic times back in our evolutionary history. 
I do I, think, but I, that's the thing is I agree with you that we probably did use bugs to get uh, B12, but could, I, I could still we don't have know. Not used bugs is the question. Could we? Is do we have? I, I do to believe th- we couldn't. We we could we could have used we could have gotten it without bugs. Do we have any good reasons to believe that? And I don't think we do. Yeah, I do think we do because What's because the, the numbers because the numbers of, show have been a, the numbers do not give us a good reason to believe that. Because I don't think that the small amounts that while you have shown that there are that we don't get the anywhere close to even the ideal amounts, which I completely agree with, I still believe that uh, I don't I, I don't have necessarily evidence to back this up, and that's because I haven't spent the time to look into it. And it would be definitely not easy to make the case, but I think it is worth considering that it uh, we could have naturally acquired enough B12 to survive. And I do believe that there were long periods of time where humans went without animal products. What that, is the evidence for that? Well, I, I have seen evidence before that uh, humans were just not very successful hunters in our early human history. That's not, that's not evidence that humans weren't getting animal products. Again, humans had plenty throughout the overall majority of human history. They had plenty of access to it. So, again, where is the evidence that we did not have access? We went through a long period of time without accessing animal products. Insects are animals. They fall under the... That's, that's, they're classified as animals. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I do okay. think humans ate eight bugs um especially early humans uh still it doesn't so where is the evidence that we could have gotten adequate amounts of b12 without eating insects now you can do it a number of ways you could say okay listen i found this body of water it has it clearly has sufficient amounts of b12 in it we could have gotten it from there or you can say okay i found this body of soil it clearly has sufficient amounts of the right type of b12 we could have gotten it from there or listen, I found this this fecal matter that was like naturally that that wasn't like people from people taking synthetic forms of B12 or anything like that. And if we just ate our own feces or something, we could have gotten it from there. You can make any argument you want, but like show me something. Well, I, I still I still really like the argument of of the paper I showed you on the on the, the paper you should know the paper you showed me doesn't make your case at all. It it actually makes the if, if anything. If you were to look at it now, if we were to look at it now through the eyes of what we know about B12 now, it makes the opposite. They thought it would make the case back then because they thought what is the required amount of B12 was incredibly lower than what it actually is. Anyone who looks at that right now with, a, with understanding what we know about B12 now, it makes the opposite case. So... I'm still skeptical because I'm wondering if. Look, have you read your? Have you read the paper? You're telling me. No, no. See, I, you I'm taking your paper. word for. I'm taking your word for it about what it says, but I'm still skeptical of whether the minimal amounts of B12 that you're talking about are enough to prevent the neurological debilitating diseases that. Then why do they happen? Why do they happen? Then why do? Then why do we observe them? Uh, from from people getting no B12. What? Well, no, they're not getting no B12. They have microbiota that are synthesizing it. Do they do though? Yes, they do. So we've observed people with neurological damage mm-hmm. that have that have the the yes. B12 microbiota in their stomach. Yes, they they have the species that are reported in that paper. Yes. I, I, yes, absolutely. The species that synthesize the species that synthesize the real B twelve and not the pseudo B twelve. Why, uh, why do you think that humans uh, don't have this ability to absorb B12 further in their hind gut like think, horses do? I think, that, I think it's the case because when, 
when evolutionarily when people tend to rely on when when beings tend to rely on a certain thing there can be and it's no longer an advantage to maintain it certain characteristics can be lost and then then they can become quote unquote distinct and there are many examples of this so for example there are fish that have spent a lot of their time living in areas where there is no light um, and then they are blind. They actually can't see. But then the question is, why do they have eyes if they can't see? Well, they just have lost certain traits and they certain right. they've maintained vestigially. And this is something in the case of humans. We've, we've relied, we've accustomed ourselves evolutionarily to getting our B12 sufficiently from animal products that we've lost our ability. So I guess it would be fair to speculate that simply because we have hands and walk upright and have opposable thumbs and therefore able to pick bugs and groom each other and eat those bugs the hands itself is what made us omnivores and i I don't i'm not going to go that far in the speculation my the furthest i will go in speculating is to say that since we have if i had to speculate i would speculate by saying since we have spent enough time uh relying on b12 from animal products we have we didn't it wasn't favorable to to have all the resources put into maintaining this ability to derive b12 from non-animal products and we've lost that ability evolutionarily Well, I, I don't have anything else. Uh, I I think your case is strong, and it, I haven't spent the time to do the math myself or to look into any other possible uh, avenues that we could have gotten B12 naturally on a vegan diet. And I think your case for eating bugs specifically is a strong one. Uh, if, if considering you saying it's true that bugs have B12 in them. That was not something I was aware of. And uh, so <clears throat> for now, I concede. Okay. If you want, thank you for your conceding. Thank you for your intellectual, intellectual honesty. And um, if you want to look into it, look, it, there's an open, I have an open challenge to anyone who has this view because I, I would like to be shaken off this view. I have every bias as a vegan to have this view, uh, have myself be proven wrong. But uh I, I just don't see it. So if you want to look at the literature and you want to do a deep dive and you want to come back for another debate, you're more than welcome. Um, but in the meantime, thank you for conceding. Good talk. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for your knowledge and teaching me and opening my my mind a little bit. It's very convenient.